Um, sometimes we might not have exactly what we need or what we wish we had, and we have to find a way to use something else. So while you're listening to this story, I want you to also think about times in your life, maybe even in the past couple of weeks when you've had to come up with a creative solution to a problem. All right, so this story is called Flory the Baker. I'll try to make sure you can see all the pictures too, because the pictures are kind of my favorite part of this book. All right. Many years ago, there lived a baker in the village of Atai. His name was Fori. Fori was very thin. He dressed in baggy clothes sewn from old flour sacks, and he wore a shapeless white cloth cap that sagged over his head like a mass of unbaked dough. Flory wasn't the only baker in town, but he was the best. He made more kinds of bread than all the other bakers combined. Not just round bread, not just square bread, not just flat bread, tall bread, skinny bread. Flory made every kind of bread, even kinds that no one in town had ever seen, heard of, or eaten before. Root bread, ice bread, rose bread, nail bread, At first, the people of Atai bought Fori's bread eagerly. For after a while, though, some of them started to complain. Pen bread, candle bread, the villagers griped to one another. Who cares if a loaf lights up your room? Who wants to write with bread? Rumors swelled like dough in a bread bowl. Fori was odd. Fori was strange. Fori was crazy. Villagers soon stopped buying from Fori, and the bakery failed. Fori moved to a shack at the edge of town. There he is in his little shack. Poor Fori. Then the Chlars invaded a Thai. The Chlars were the cruelest of all barbarians. Long ago, bands of them used to invade the mountain land, but none had raided a Thai for many years. Now, without warning, dozens of Chlars simply showed up with their clubs, pikes, and battle axes. No one in the village had a chance to resist. Besides, the people of Itai were gentle by nature. The mountains had almost always kept out their enemies, so they knew little of fighting and possessed no weapons. The Chlars shouted, back to your houses, all of you. Stay there until we tell you what to do. Everyone obeyed. The Chlar army then withdrew, setting up several camps to surround the village. The warriors would return the next morning to take the people of a Thai prisoner and lead them away. That night, the villagers scurried through underground passageways and met in a cellar to plan their defense. What shall we do? asked Oziki the blacksmith. We can't just let these invaders conquer us. Bring your hammers and pokers, said Alara the weaver. We'll drive back the Chlars. Tikaji the cobbler declared, I'll bring my scrapers, gouges and awls. Whatever we have to use, we'll fight them. Shouting and cheering, everyone agreed. Down with the Chlars, they cried. Then a voice at the back said, that plan won't work. All the men and women turned to see who spoke. It was Fori the baker. There are too many Chlars, he said, and they have too many weapons for us to fight them off. We'll never beat them with hoes, hammers, and awls. What do you suggest then, said Oziki? Wearing bread bowls for helmet, using spoons for swords? Everyone laughed. No, something better. Ilara asked, better? Like what, maybe bread? People laughed and laughed. Of course, Fori told them, what else but bread? The room fell silent. Fori was right about the Chlars having so many weapons, but what good was bread in fighting them? We'll hear what you have to say, Ilara proclaimed. If your plan isn't good though, we'll go ahead with our own. 
so they listened to him closely. Not many people felt convinced that Foray's idea would work. Still, no one could suggest anything better. The villagers decided to go along with Fori. All night, the men, women, and children of Atai waited in their cottages. All night, they watched, listened, and wondered when the invaders would enter the village again. All night, they doubted that Fori the baker could save them from the Chlars. The next morning, well before dawn, Fori passed out weapons to the villagers as they swarmed around him in the darkness. Swords, pikes, shields, bows, and arrows, Fori gave them to the men and women. Maces, spears, and lances too, all kinds of armor as well. Where did you find these weapons? Someone asked. I didn't find them, Fori told her. Now take a sword from the pile, time is short. It was even shorter than they thought, for the stars had scarcely faded from the sky when almost a hundred chlars showed up shouting, screaming, and shrieking with glee. Then the chlars stopped short. The fading darkness revealed every wall, rooftop, tower, and balcony in town covered with men and women and the half-light showed every person bristling with weapons. Where had all the weapons come from? The invaders had searched every house, every shop, every granary and barn, yet a whole forest of weapons had sprung up overnight. The Chlars saw the silhouette of this great army, the slant of the pikes, the curve of the bows, the straightness of the arrows, and they were afraid. Little did they know it was only bread that frightened them. Swords made of bread, shields made of bread, helmets, breastplates, armor, all bread. Bows and arrows, lances, axes, maces, pikes, spears, catapults, everything was bread, nothing but bread. The two forces faced each other for a long moment. Then suddenly, one of the Chlars shrieked in order. The people of Atai feared the worst. With a great clatter of metal and wood and leather and stone, all the Chlars staggered back, turned, and fled. They ran out of town, up the valley, over the pass, and out of the mountain land. The villagers stood there in silence. No one could believe what had happened. Then, little by little, people started to talk. Alara the weaver, Oziki the blacksmith, Tikaji the cobbler, and all the rest. Soon there was a great commotion of laughter, cheering, and shouts. Fori has saved us! Long live Fori the baker! The villagers found Fori, lifted him to their shoulders, and carried him through the streets until they reached the town square. Then some people left, returning at once with butter, jelly, and jam. And to celebrate their victory over the Chlars, everyone sat down together with Fori and ate all of their weapons for breakfast. And that is the end. <laughs> So that story is really fun, kind of silly, but I think it has an important message because sometimes we don't have what we need or what we think we need or what we want to have, and we have to make do with whatever we can, right? And I think that Fori does a really good job of doing that. So yeah, that's my story for today. Thank, Thank you for listening. listening. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and unmute Mr. Adam. Hi, everyone. So today, we're going to go on an adventure. And this is an imagination adventure. And I want everyone to know that you can go on adventures anytime you want, whenever you want. Well, maybe not so much if you have to be paying attention. But any other time, you can go on this adventure and you can make it your own adventure, okay? Before we start, I need you to get your body really comfortable and gently close your eyes. 
slowly take three deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. Spend a moment or two relaxing your feet and your legs. Let go of any tightness and let them become heavy and relaxed. Imagine a wave of blue light traveling up from the earth into your feet and legs, relaxing everything it touches. Now relax your tummy, your chest, and shoulders. Imagine this wave of blue light sweeping through and relaxing this area for you. Pay attention to your arms and fingers. Allow the blue light to feel how relaxed you are. Finally, bring the blue light into your head and allow it to flow out of the top of your head and into the air around you. Great job, everyone. Imagine you are standing in front of a massive tree. This tree has deep, deep roots and branches that reach out in every direction. This tree is home to your very own treehouse. This is a treehouse of your own design. Picture how you would like your treehouse to look. You can add swings, windows, trap doors, plants, animals, all of your favorite things, all of your favorite colors. Just allow yourself to design the treehouse any way you like. Can you see it? Great. Now allow yourself to go inside the treehouse. Are you inside? Good. Inside the treehouse, imagine anything that makes you feel good to think about. Place pillows, waterfalls, plants, trees, birds, pictures of mountains, anything that you would like, that you feel good when you think about, can go inside your treehouse. Now take a moment and design the inside of your treehouse now. I want you to know that when you go inside your treehouse, you feel really, really relaxed. This is a place to let go of all your thoughts and all your worries. Take a deep breath and allow yourself to feel very peaceful and relaxed inside your treehouse. This is a place that you can go anytime you would like to feel more peaceful and calm. Know that your treehouse is available to you anytime you would like. You can visit here whenever you would like. Now take a deep breath and imagine yourself walking down out of your treehouse. Gently bring your attention back to the room. Rub your hands together to make them warm. Gently place them over your eyes. And you can open your eyes when you are ready.
Thanks, everyone, for going to the treehouse with me. Thank you, Mr. Adam. I want to add one last thing. So after we're all done, is there anybody on here that likes to color pictures? It's really fun. If you want to, you can color a picture of your treehouse. 